Okay. Uh, would like to request uh, someone to please lead us in a word of prayer, and then we can continue. Uh, Susan, is it possible for you to lead us today in prayer? Are you comfortable to lead? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful morning you have given us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity you have given us, Lord, to learn and to understand all your um, revelation which you have kept for us, all the mystery, Lord. Thank you for uh, our Madam, Lord Jesus. Bless her also, Lord. Speak through her, Lord Jesus, and uh, convey to us whatever you want to teach us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless each and everyone who has joined here, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful day once again. Asking in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Susan, uh, for leading us in that word of prayer. Uh, we will pick up from where we had stopped in the last class. We were talking about seasons of preparation in our life uh, and seemingly disconnected seasons and how uh, everything is used by God to build us up. Everything is used in our lives to build our character, to prepare our hearts for the vision that God has for each one of us. So we will continue along the same theme of preparation. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are many examples in the word of God of people who have gone through such preparation. So Joseph is a wonderful example. Uh, we know that, you know, he uh, definitely knew that God was going to use him because God gave him a dream. Uh, and, uh, you know, he looked forward to mighty things in God. However, the journey of his life was not so smooth. So in Psalm 105, I am um, in Kingdom Builders publication, page number 35. Okay, so that's where I'm at, if you're wondering where, where we are. So there is a passage from uh, Psalm 105, uh, verses 17 through 22, that describes the journey of uh, Joseph, you know, how he became a slave, how he um, became a prisoner, and how, you know, uh, he had to face so many challenges uh, uh, through his journey in Egypt. So this was definitely a preparation time in Joseph's life, something that God, uh, you know, God was with him during that time. Uh, but then, you know, it, it even though it, it seemed like it was so unnecessary for him to go through all this, uh, God knew how to build David up, uh, sorry, uh, Joseph up uh, through this situation. So uh, we're talking about the life of Joseph. So if we look closely and in our notes, here, there is a very detailed assessment of the life of Joseph, uh, followed by the life of, uh, um, I think it's Moses, yeah, Moses, and then the life of David. Uh, we will look at the number of years that elapsed after they got a word from God that they are going to be uh, serving the Lord, you know, in, in whichever way God had called them to. So uh, it was never a short period of time. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with Joseph. So when we look at the life of Joseph, um, early on as a child, he had a dream from God and you know, God showed him how all his brothers are going to bow down to him. And uh, he was very like innocent, right? Like he went and he shared his dream uh, and little did he realize that it is going to cause jealousy among the brothers. So he went and shared his dream. Um, and the next thing that happens is that he's sold by his brothers. He sold to Egypt. So uh, Joseph was about 17 years old when this happened. And then, you know, you, you study about the life of Joseph. You observe that, you know, he lived in um, uh, Egypt for 11 years. Okay. Uh, and what was he doing in Egypt? He found work in Potiphar's house. So for 11 years, he was serving there. Uh, he was serving with excellence, of course, because, you know, we know that uh, Potiphar, Potiphar was so happy that he entrusted him with everything, right? E uh, every responsibility in his house. Uh, and he trusted Joseph. So 11 years, he was a good steward of what was given to him. Uh, and then, you know, the incident with Potiphar's wife happens. And then two years, he's in the prison. 
Uh, so 13 years, right? From 17 to 13, uh, sorry, 17 plus 13, if you add that, about 30 years old, you know, Joseph is right now. Uh, and again, he must have wondered what happened to the uh, dream that God gave me that I'm going to be a blessing to my family, that I'm going to uh, be a deliverer for my brothers. Uh, but then as you look at his life unfold, uh, it took another nine years. Uh, at the age of 39 is when his family actually comes to Egypt to buy food. So he sees them for the first time at age 39. And the second time would be at age 41. Okay, so uh, think about this. It's been a long, long time since the uh, period when God gave him the dream. He was a child. So we could say maybe, I don't, I don't know, 10 years old or something that he had the dream. But it took 30 years for, Dave, uh, for uh, Joseph to uh, experience the fulfillment of that dream. So, you know, God, now we can ask the question, like what, why God, why is it that you communicate to us way ahead of time uh, and then it's only much later that we walk into your promises. Now, there can be many reasons why, but one thing we know, and we'll talk about it later also, that you know, God is really building us up, not just in terms of um, our skill, not just in terms of our anointing, but also in terms of our character. So uh, in Joseph's life, we observe that you know, uh, only mm, at, around the age of 30, he took responsibility um, uh, in Egypt, like he kind of, God elevated him. Uh, to a, a position of second in command. And uh, he faithfully served for about 70 years in that position to uh, bless God's people. And he lived up to you know, 110 years old. So that is the um, journey that Joseph made uh, with regard to the God-given vision, uh, which was so important to him. Uh, so again, you know, the God-given vision that he will be in a position of influence, that he will be a deliverer for his own family and others. Now, he lived that vision for, you could say, 70 years. But the journey, that, the journey of preparation before those 70 years of execution began, uh, it was not easy. Okay? And it was several years of, of um, being in a position, you know, they say like pit to prison. Right, pit and then prison also happened uh, before the position came about in Joseph's life. So that is Joseph's life, uh, and we observe, you know, the passage of time. Uh, and in the case of Joseph, we could also observe that um, uh, there was something that others did to put him in trouble. So why did he end up in Egypt? His brothers sold him out of jealousy. Now, can God? redeem can god restore uh, when evil things happen to us answer is yes see god knew that he is going to elevate joseph no matter what even though it was not joseph's fault that he ended up in egypt even through that god knew how to you know uh, open the doors for joseph and position him but of course in the life of Joseph, we do see that spirit of excellence, that spirit of faithfulness. Uh, he didn't give up, uh, even in the most difficult circumstances. So that is about Joseph. Now, moving on to the life of Moses, it's uh, kind of similar because um, Moses was protected by God supernaturally when children his age, Jewish children, were dying. Uh, and then he was supernaturally sort of, um, uh, you know, protected through his childhood. The Pharaoh's daughter takes him in. He gets the best of education, the best of care. And, you know, uh, Moses' um, uh, mother takes care of, of Moses. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's like he's being prepared. He's being equipped for the purpose of God for his life. And it's only at the age of 40 that you know it comes into his heart uh, that he has to deliver his own people so uh, did moses was moses aware that he didn't belong to egypt 
Yes, Moses was very much aware. And again, so like Joseph, Moses had these grand dreams of delivering the Jewish people. However, we see that uh, you know he tried to attempt doing something in his own ability. When he saw uh, a, a Jewish man fighting with uh, an Egyptian, he tries to be the deliverer, and out of his anger, he ends up murdering the Egyptian. Right, and that that causes uh, uh, a disturbance in in the plan of God. And then Moses has to like flee for his life because people are against him now. So he flees into the wilderness, and then he has to be in the wilderness for forty long years uh, till sort of you know the wrath of of uh, uh, the king cools down. Okay, it's only after another 40 years, so at age 80, that he comes, he, he resumes uh, his mission. And you could say that he walked into his divine mission at the age of 80. So it took him 40 years because of the mistake. Now, Joseph, it was a different situation. People put him in trouble. Uh, Moses, Moses created his own trouble, uh, you know, in, in that sense. He tried to push the the plan of god and he ended up you know uh, spending another 40 years before uh, he could actually uh, step into his calling and and be that leader and uh, the um, deliverer for uh, the jewish people so that's about uh, the life of moses and uh, moses again he died at the age of 120 so even as we consider the lives of these people in detail, we're able to observe uh, that they made a journey. They made a journey, God was with them, uh, and through the seemingly disconnected, or you might want to uh, look at it as wasted season, you know, both Joseph and Moses, they could have immediately uh, uh, like swung into action, and they could have uh, come into position and taken over their divine mission, but it didn't happen in both cases. Uh, and there was a, a passage of time before they actually could step in. Now, let's look at the life of David. I'm on page 37. So uh, David, uh, like Joseph, very early on in his life, he knew that God had called him for something. So at the age of 13, uh, David is... David is, um, you know, like anointed. At that point itself, Samuel kind of, you know, he identifies David and he speaks about God's plan for David's life. Uh, but then the initial years of David were just about, you know, uh, taking care of his father's sheep, taking care of responsibilities that his father gave. Then, you know, he, um, he was a, a good musician, so he was... Uh, totally into music, writing writing songs for the Lord. Uh, and then you see him fighting li the lion and the bear. And eventually, you know, at the age of uh, roughly about 15 to 17 years, he has his first national uh, fame because he slays Goliath. Um, so even at this point, we could be wondering, you know, how come uh, this, this, uh, this child, is aware of his destiny, but nothing is actually happening. Okay. However, you know, then there's the whole uh, unfolding of the events in David's life because Saul doesn't like him. Saul is trying to kill him. So the next several years, you know, David is trying to uh, escape from Saul. He's living like a vagabond. And uh, during that time, you know, God causes uh, uh, mighty men to come and join David. And, you know, they, they are also people like him. So they, they kind of understand each other. And through these mighty men, you know, David uh, it, it becomes that man of war uh, and that, um, you know, valiant, uh, valiant person. Uh, so it's only at the age of 23 that we notice that he became the king of Judah. So like, like roughly about 10 years, right, from the age of 13, it took 10 years for him to become the King of Judah, and then again, you know, there is the passage of time, uh, and um, uh, it is said that, yeah, he was thirty years old, thirty years old when he was finally made king of Israel and 
Judah. So similar to what happened to Joseph in his life, and then no, in David's case, again, uh, we could we could look at his circumstances and say Saul uh, caused a lot of difficulty. Then um, you know the kind of decisions that David made, or we we could look at you know different instances and say, oh, this is the reason why uh, David did not uh, take his take up his throne immediately but whatever whatever happened in david's life we know that god is is a mighty god that he is able to redeem uh, he is able to uh, reposition us and uh, you know, he is able to fulfill the promise which he has made upon our lives but what is most important is that we remain aligned that you know we we uh, remain yielded to god we remain surrendered to god because again if you look at moses's life when he tried to do things on his own he was not aligned and that ended up wasting more time in moses's life so uh, here we notice that at the age of 30 in the life of david that's when he uh, took on the role of king over israel and then he reigned for 40 years and then you know you kind of read the the about the life of david uh, he died at the age of 75 years so he remained in his in his mission and he died at the age of 75 now looking at somebody from the new testament you know paul the apostle and i i think this is covered um uh in fulfilling god's purpose for your life which is there in your first year course um so you probably already know about the life of paul so the life of paul uh, uh that you we see that at the age of 33 is when he had an encounter with God on the road to Damascus. Uh, so uh, that's when the journey actually begins. But soon after that, even though he wants to do ministry, he's not accepted by people because people uh, doubt him. People doubt his integrity. People wonder whether he is, uh, you know, he is like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, just claiming to be a believer. So his ministry is not received immediately after uh, Saul's conversion. We uh, read about him spending time uh, in the areas of Damascus and Arabia for some time. And then he visits Jerusalem for about 15 days. Uh, so, you know, there is, there is all this happening. And then later he goes to the regions of Tarsus, Syria, and Cilicia, uh, but the Bible does not record. The Bible does not record uh, any kind of uh, details about the ministry of Saul. Now, obviously, we know that uh, he received his revelation. Okay, uh, a lot of his revelation during this time. You know, when when he was he was not even connected to the apostles because you know in the writings of paul you you see that he only spent 15 days in jerusalem and uh, that too i think he spent with peter 15 days he went there he spent with uh, uh, he he only met peter there and that was about it so uh, what kind like who were the people in his life what was he teaching in his early years we don't have much information but later we we see that um, after 13 years, after 13 years is when Barnabas comes to Tarsus and he brings Saul to Antioch. Okay, so he brings Saul to Antioch and over there uh, for one year, we, we uh, notice that Saul becomes a teacher. He becomes, you know, a very um, well-respected figure in the church of Antioch. So it took 13 years of preparation. Uh, and then, you know, as you study a little more about, you know, what, what he was up to and all, uh, it's only around the age of 17, or sorry, after 17 years had elapsed that, uh, you know, Paul was, was launched into notable ministry, like uh, Acts 13, uh, he steps out on his missionary journeys. So by this time, you know, uh, Saul or Paul is about 50 years old. Okay. Uh, and then he goes ahead with his missionary journeys and writing his epistles and, and everything. And I think around age 
66 is when you know he uh, he died so that's about the journey of uh, paul and uh, there are 17 years that are called as the silent years of paul so it, what are we trying to say we're trying to say that god gives us a vision uh, and the god given vision right, the god given vision uh, even though it's very vivid right in within us in our hearts in our minds and we want to see the fulfillment of that vision tomorrow that may not be how god uh, leads us into that god given vision that can be uh, a, a good amount of time that passes by for whatever reason right it could be for the right reasons that for example in the case of uh, paul he went and he was still doing ministry it's not like somebody pushed him into the regions of tarsus cilicia and all of that but he went there. and uh, what okay. Sound disturbance here. Sorry, I'm going to move something. You move it up there. You move it somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We shall continue. So yes, for the right reasons or for the wrong reasons, whatever the case may be, um, there is there is uh, an element of time. Okay, and we have to wait upon the Lord for, we've talked about this, the Kairos moment or the right timing of God uh, for things to unfold. Okay? And God is not in a hurry. God is not in a hurry uh, and we have to depend on the Lord for his appointed time to initiate things, to execute things, to fulfill things. So no, look, we look at it this way. No, we need God all along. We need God when the vision is given to us. We need God when we step into the vision. We need God when we are, we are executing the, the vision. So all along, you know, we need God and we have to go by how God is leading us. Uh, and never, never um, look down or you know, feel bad about the preparation time because preparation time uh, is essentially a waiting time uh, and in this waiting time God is able to do so many things um, in us and God might be doing other things around us which we are not realizing but that waiting time is not a wasted time uh, and from the lives of the people that we have noticed um, they were not idle in the waiting time Joseph is the best example. You know, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, did I say 13 years? Something like that. You know, whatever, whatever number of years. Yeah, 13 years in Egypt. Uh, when his vision was not fulfilled, you know, he could have just sat there and sulked and said, when is the door going to open? When is the door going to open? But, you know, what he did was he was faithful to all the you know, small responsibilities, big responsibilities, whatever came to him, he was faithful during that time. And, uh, you know, we could examine his life further and say so many other things that God built skill, God helped him build character. Uh, so a lot of development would have happened in Joseph's life. And God knew that that is the kind of preparation he needed to be second in command uh, and similarly when we look at the life of Moses you know Moses uh, in the wilderness God did other things in his life he um, uh, got married and he was able to take care of his father-in-law sheep so he was engaged in something he was engaged in something while he was still waiting on the Lord and then you know the burning bush happened and God's instruction came and he could step out uh, to deliver the people of Israel uh, in the case of David yeah, so many things that David did during the waiting period. He raised up an army. Uh, he engaged in important ba uh, battles. He learned how to hear from God, right? Trust God for his victories. So there was a preparation that was going on within David. And Paul, obviously, you know, he received uh, revelations and he uh, would have learned you know, other other 
uh, things like you know how to teach the anointing of god increasing over his life so many things that god did during his silent years so this is the manner in which you know god works in our lives and uh, there can be different seasons there can be an entire process right that god takes us through uh, and we must be ready we must be ready to to grow in god to learn through everything to learn learn through everything and that's when you know, god uh, will be able to equip us and uh, open the doors at the right time okay so there uh, any any thoughts before i, I proceed further or are you all doing okay okay yes uh, samuel you have a question Oh, um, no, no. Uh, okay, great. Okay. okay, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, I think we we all um, are on the same page, so it's good. Okay, let's proceed. A few more sections here for us to touch upon. Um, uh, the next section says the unfolding of a God-given vision may differ from our expectation. okay so and that you know we've already we've already uh, discussed that that the journey that each person made was very very different uh, though they might have thought that okay now for example joseph he probably thought that wherever he was you know god would raise him up and uh, god would make him a king or something like that in his own land but that was not the case god had a way uh, of leading him and god had a way of causing him to even come out of adverse situations to fulfill the vision which he had so similarly in our lives you know when when we go through a phase or a season uh which seems di- different okay now i really like you you might think that god will put you through a certain course and uh, give you a certain position for you to gain the experience that you need to do what god has called you to do now god may not do it that way god may do it in a very different way okay? but whatever it is whatever it is the unfolding we have to be open to receive we have to be open to receive the way god is working in our lives and even if mistakes happen right because of our decisions or because of something that someone has done uh, against us we have to have the faith that you know what god is greater god is greater than than what i'm going through and he is able to uh, bring me back align me to the purpose of god for my life and god has done that in the lives of people and he continues to do that so the unfolding of the vision may be very different from the way we um, assume it it to be uh, yes yeah, christopher you um, please go ahead christopher you have something to ask uh, yes pastor yeah, so yeah. um um this is just a thought that um, mm-hmm. that occurred to me um in in uh, jesus life uh, you know he spent 33 years uh, on the earth and of which um 30 years we don't know very much about uh now i'm i can't really say that you know that was preparation time for him uh but it was obviously a time that you know he he was not really uh, in ministry so just trying to understand um or trying to get a you know just trying to get your view on um uh you know the those 30 years how, mm-hmm. what did that actually um uh, uh you know um uh, you know mean for jesus and uh, uh you know sometimes i feel that you know uh, you know why was it not why was it just 3 years you know why do why why you know it could have been if it was more years it could have been a i mean things could have could have been much more different mm-hmm. so i uh, just wanted to understand from your point of view uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know how this um, how what you know what what uh, sort of you know constituted these 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 30 years and you know how how it uh, how it uh, leads to you know uh, a time where um, uh, you know Jesus was not really in ministry but you know he was doing he was basically uh, you know at home and uh, you know leading a normal life 
Yes, uh, yes, uh, Christopher. I think that's a very relevant question. Uh, for just to talk about it, I want to share a scripture. So this is Hebrews chapter five and verse eight. I will post it here in the chat. On this uh, verse says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Okay, I ended up copying the King James Version. Uh, but basically what it says is that he learned obedience by the things which he suffered or the things that he went through. So when we read about the early years of Jesus, you're right. We don't read too much about it, except the fact that he was he was an obedient son to his parents um, and he was he was even more obedient and committed to God the Father. If you recall, uh, uh, his family was a devout family. They would go uh, uh, for worship, they would go to the temple and at age eight, you know, you know that he stayed back uh, and his his parents had to come get him because he was he was so devoted to the father even at that age uh, and he knew his calling that we know because you know he talks about how uh, he he's there to do his father's uh, will and his father's works uh, so from the passages uh, that talk about the early life of jesus few things we can pick up you know, that he was obedient to the father he was devoted to the father he was uh, obedient to his parents okay uh, even from his later life we know that he was a, he was a good son even when he was crucified on the cross you know, he is worried about mary okay he's so he kind of entrusts her to one of his disciples so he lived an obedient life to god and to the authorities that god had uh, placed upon him and he did life with responsibility because uh, we we know that the people said isn't this the carpenter's son Okay, and, and we know that, you know, uh, uh, Jesus himself was a carpenter. So he did work uh, and fulfill his responsibilities. So things like this, we, we learn that. And from this verse, we know that uh, there are things that he went through. But through all that, you know, we, we, we are sure that even in the life of Jesus, there was some sort of a preparation that God was doing. And was Jesus perfect? Yes, because the same book, Hebrews, talks a lot about how he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. So he was already perfect. But there was something more that the Lord was doing uh, in his life. And he learned obedience, it says. He learned obedience through the things that he suffered or the things that he went through. So that's uh, as much as we know about the life of Jesus. Um, but Jesus was so well prepared. Now in John chapter 2, we read for the first time, he manifested his glory uh, when he turned the water into wine. And that was the beginning of the signs, uh, miracles and wonders that uh, Jesus performed. Uh, now from then on, you know, uh, Christopher rightly said, three, three and a half years uh, is the duration of his ministry. And you know he was, was crucified at the end of that period. But those three and a half years, where uh, he was so aligned to the will of the Father that he fulfilled everything that God wanted him to do in three and a half years. Okay, so that's the beauty of that. Now, why did God allow Jesus to prepare himself for 30 years and only minister for three and a half years? I don't know. It's, it's quite mysterious to me uh, as well. But uh, that's how God worked in Jesus' life. So uh, we, we are but, you know, we are just uh, human beings. Um, he was the son of God, though he was fully man. So we learned something from that. So uh, Christopher, uh, just some thoughts. I don't think I have answered your question, but uh, do these thoughts make some sense? Yes, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, usually I've heard uh, Pastor Ashish share that he started preaching very young uh, while he was a teenager. 
uh, and he was so passionate for God that um, uh, at some point, I think before his tenth or after his tenth standard, uh, he wanted to go to Bible college. So, um, and he was very, you know, very uh, insistent that that's what should be done. Uh, and uh, his uh, his parents took him for counseling to one of the uh, church pastors, uh, and the the pastor told him. He said, "Look." Um, God waited for 30 years in Jesus' life and launched him into ministry only after 30 years. Why are you in such a hurry? <laughs> right? So that's when he, uh, he kind of decided that, oh, okay, fine. You know, let me finish my 10th standard. Let me uh, study some more. And uh, later, you know, as the Lord leads, I will step into full-time ministry. So you know, just uh, one testimony there, which I've heard him share. Um, so yeah, similarly, uh, even in our lives, God takes us through a preparation season and a preparation time, and we must embrace that. Yes. Yeah, and the way uh, the path is, the way God's vision unfolds might be very different from what we have imagined. Um, but you know, we must wait for the Kairos moment of God for the fulfillment of his vision okay uh, otherwise what will happen if we don't wait for the kairos moment we end up causing things to become more difficult oh okay there are uh... okay so anita is saying uh, he was preaching okay jesus was preaching from a small age Okay. Mm, yeah, he had uh, wisdom. We, we hear about that. Okay. Anita, is that a question? You want to ask something or just a comment? Okay. It's just a comment. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, say, uh, yes, please go ahead. Yes, Mar. I just wanted to add to what you said. You know, there's a verse in Galatians that says that at the fullness of time, Christ was brought to the earth. You know, and we see that as the redemption plan of God was unfolding, history mm. too was playing itself alongside. So I believe one of the reasons why it was three and a half years was because at the time when Jesus Christ was to die, it collided exactly with the timing and setting which you referred to as the Kairos moment. You know, it just, it just was, it was right on point. You know, at that mm -hmm. moment, he had to die within the mm -hmm. time frame of how history was unfolding, how time was unfolding, because the Roman government was just you know, the way they crucified the criminals. Everything just tallied alongside with how Christ was going to die. So I believe, yeah, timing, the timing was just right. And so I believe this is what God was working with. At the same time, as history was unfolding, God too was unfolding his salvation plan for both to intersect and then for Christ to save us. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yes, yes. Thank you, Say. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's uh, so true. So even outside of Jesus, uh, the world was kind of, you know, uh, being prepared for the ministry of Jesus. Uh, so the timing, the Kairos timing uh, is important. And we must wait for that Kairos timing of God. Now, there are some examples. Um, uh, in fact, the example of Moses has been uh, put down here in our notes for us. The fact that, you know, he tried to... Uh, he tried to move into the plan of God before it was time. And so, you know, he ended up wasting 40 years of his life, right? Uh, so these, ki these kind of mistakes that we make uh, can cause a delay. Uh, now, in fulfilling God's vision, when we think about the life of Abraham, you know, we, we said that the spirit uh, versus the flesh and um, what is this? Uh, Ishmael. Ishmael is a picture of the flesh. So Abraham, when he tried to uh, complete God's vision, uh, it created, it brought about an enemy 
right for the the actual promise of god which is isaac so you know when we try to do things in our own strength when we try to do things in our own timing uh, that brings about mistakes okay uh, and yet we've said that even if that happens when we acknowledge uh, our mistakes we go back to god god is able there is a beautiful scripture in uh, joel joel chapter 2 and verse 25 it says so i will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust the consuming locust and the chewing locust my great army which i sent among you so i will restore the years that the locust has eaten so in our lives when we look back at our um, um, you know years and and sometimes we might think if at all i had done this earlier you know if at all i had learned this skill earlier or joined that college earlier or you know not done this or not done that you know we can look back all we want but that's not the way to go forward you know looking back uh, to learn some lessons is fine uh, but just staying in the past is not going to help one bit instead uh, you know we must trust that god can restore even if mistakes have been made god can restore the wasted years and look ahead uh, because proverbs 46 it says ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established so looking ahead thinking ahead planning ahead is uh, what is important um Yes, see, hand raised. Uh, say, do you have another question, or is this from the phone? Question here. Yeah. No question. It's a question. So, um, we saw that oh, Moses. Yes. Yeah. So we saw that Moses, um, due to what he did, killing the Egyptian, you know, extended his time. Mm. Um, extended the time he was supposed to, you know, fulfill his purpose to deliver the children of Israel another forty years. Now we see that God promised mm. Moses and Abraham back then that the children of Israel will be taken into captivity, but after four hundred years, they will be they will mm. return back to the promised land. So my question is: I've always been of the opinion that I think that forty-year delay was what led to four hundred and thirty years. There's a thirty years extra they spent in Egypt. I don't know if I'm correct. I I'd just like to know your opinion on that and your answer. Is it right to say, due to Moses, um, um, due to Moses um, taking um, actions into his hands, right, taking the um, making that mistake, cost the extra thirty years that the Israelites spent instead of four hundred years? Okay. Yeah. So, yes, I, I, I think so. Uh, so. like you want to know exactly how if those 30 years cost an additional uh, you know uh, so if the, if the extra 40 years that Moses had to spend in the wilderness before returning mm-hmm. back he 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 went back to Egypt when he was 80 he left mm-hmm. Egypt when he was 40 so he spent 40 years in the wilderness with Jethro mm-hmm. and all that so i'm asking mm-hmm. myself could it be that due to Moses Moses action Mm. that led to the israelites staying an extra 30 years whereas god told abraham they will mm. only stay for 100 years in egypt i don't know if mm. that's right to say yeah so that's that's a thing say like i i haven't given that a thought um uh, well in my head i i thought those 40 years were included in the 400 uh but i would need to look it up i would really need to look that up and and uh, let you know uh, would anyone else know in, in class here the exact number of years uh, that it took for the israelites to leave egypt was it 440 no 400 i think it was 400 pieces oh ma'am because i also had the question while reading bible why ah. it is 400 yeah okay. i do remember it vividly why it is 440 i wanted to know mm-hmm. no it, it was no no it was 430 years that they yeah. after 430 years the israelite left but my question is could it be that that extra 30 years because god told abraham specifically 400 years they will be in captivity but they will leave after 
But when they left with Moses, it was 430 years. So I'm asking myself, could it be due to Moses' um, action, you know, of killing the Egyptian that led to that extra 30 years? I don't know. That's, that has been my opinion so far. So I just, I just thought I'd bring that question. So that yeah. I can, or maybe it's something we can check out later on. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, anyway, we have a break time now, so we can do a little bit of, uh, you know, researching and, and maybe come back with the exact uh, number of years. Uh, and if it is 430 years, uh, it, that that is, I'm just thinking, wow, you know, a hum one human being's mistake can cause <laughs> others, so many others, exactly. 30 more years. Yeah, that's, that's what I that's that's what I've been thinking all this while since I read you know, read mm -hmm. that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So, uh, yes, everyone. Okay, so uh, how about we we just take a break here? Uh, it's not yet ten fifty, but it's ten forty eight. So let's take a break now, and then uh, you know come back sort out this this issue and then we will proceed from here okay ma yes okay uh louis i think this is uh, in genesis 15 if i'm not wrong so you'll have to go back to genesis to uh, read the the promise that god gave abraham okay so sure okay all right class we we're on a break now we will meet at uh, 10 58 Thank you.